Hello, my name is Iona Wright, and I'm here on the third day at the Consensus Conference um, as Director of BVI Finance. My other hat is also um, Senior Counsel um, for the BVI Regulatory and Risk Advisory Practice at Walker's BVI. It's great to be here. How does BVI Finance actively build and maintain strong relationships with key stakeholders, both locally and internationally, to support the jurisdiction's competitiveness? That's a great question, and actually it's very topical because at the moment, BBI Finance is on um, a large um, Asia trade mission, which is uh, taking a couple of weeks um, over in all the big cities, Hong Kong, Singapore, Shanghai, to name a few. And um, there's a a delegation out there, so including the Deputy Premier, who's over um, raising awareness of the, the current regulatory initiatives, um, including in the crypto landscape um, that are going through uh, the BBI regulator and government um, at the moment, and uh, really just looking to promote the jurisdiction and, and the financial services industry in the BBI. How does BBI finance contribute to maintaining a business friendly environment in the British Virgin Islands, and what initiatives are in place to support the growth of financial service sectors? So, uh, really, the BBI Finance mission is threefold, um, protect, promote and people. Protect is really all about looking after its image and reputation, ensuring that the right message is communicated about the BBI. Promote is all to do with the BBI's financial products and services and uh, promoting um, its financial services industry to to the globe and, uh, and raising awareness. And uh, people is all around enhancing the human resources capacity in the BVI, which is obviously a fairly small jurisdiction, and uh, making sure that we are recruiting the right local people into the financial services industry. What are some key features of the modern and efficient company legislation in the British Virgin Islands, and how does it support global business operations? So um, the benefit of the Business Companies Act in the BVI is that it's really clear, well-defined, and very commercial. There is a reason that we have over 350,000 active companies and uh, it's very quick to market. So um, you can set up a a BBI business company within 24 hours in the BBI as long as you've got all your KYC in place. Looking ahead, what are the key priorities and initiatives that BBI Finance will focus on to further enhance the jurisdiction's global competitiveness in the financial services industry? So we are working with the government at the moment to get certainty on certain key regulatory initiatives. Examples are at the moment the beneficial ownership changes, which is really um, big, uh, big business, big news um, across the world, particularly for the CDOTs. Um, and uh, the government is pending its decision on global minimum tax and uh, the crypto assets reporting framework. So lots to, uh, to look forward to in terms of um, the regulatory pipeline. The next set of questions are going to be a little bit more general, but you can uh, bring them back to uh, BBI however you see fit. Can you share your perspective on the most significant developments in the blockchain space over the last year? So as a regulator and risk advisory law, I'm probably going to focus on regulation here, but I do think it's incredibly important to the blockchain space and uh, really bringing it mainstream. Um, A good example in the BVI is our uh, Virtual Asset Service Providers Act, which was implemented last year. And what it's done is it's provided regulatory certainty and clarity around um, whether or not businesses need to be licensed to do what they do. Um, For example, we have complete clarity in the BVI that token issuers do not need to be licensed. And as such, we've had a huge boom in business there, which has been really brilliant. Um, So, yeah, I would say regulatory certainty and regulatory developments are are key for the the blockchain space. And we've seen that globally with the EU coming out with Mika, which is due to be implemented soon, and many of the other jurisdictions, including the US, looking to move forward with some form of regulation in the crypto sector. How do you see the role of traditional financial institutions evolving with the rise of decentralized finance and blockchain technology? Well, I think um, they're really starting to realise that they need to keep up or they're going to be left behind. Um, And I believe we're seeing more and more now 
particularly since we're getting this regulatory clarity around the world. Um, examples of the TradFi sector working with the DeFi sector um, more and more in harmony and, um, and are looking to assist each other. A good example of this is um, I saw one of the speakers from Bitpanda yesterday. He was talking about how they are partnering with some of the big European banks, including in Germany. Um, to assist them with, with some of their product offerings. So it's an exciting time, I think, as we start to see both TradFi and DeFi kind of coming together and providing unique solutions. What do you see as the biggest challenges facing the adoption of blockchain technology and how can the industry overcome them? Probably, you know, um, it's, it would be come down to reputation, clearly after um, what happened with FTX. Crypto still has a way to go to um, really clean up its reputation um, from a mainstream perspective. I think in this sense, um, what the, uh, there, there was the CFTC representative who was speaking yesterday and she was saying um, it's important that crypto does not become synonymous with fraud. Fraudsters are just committing fraud. It doesn't matter whether they're using crypto or they're using fiat. And to this end, making sure that the space is appropriately regulated and uh, setting the, the guardrails for regulation is key to ensuring that there is consumer trust in the industry. And I think we're getting closer and closer to that every day now. How do you envision the future of Web3 and what impact do you think it will have on the internet as we know it? I was reading something really interesting from the Ethereum website the other day um, about the evolution um, to from Web1 to Web3. Web 1 was uh, read only, Web 2 was read write, and Web 3 is read write own. So I think that kind of really sums up um, the impact it will have, is that we're moving now to a space where Web 3 means ownership, individual ownership over, um, o over individual creations and a movement away from centralized infrastructure and dominance by key tech companies. So I think it's a really exciting time when we're starting to see um, the, the people and the creators there uh, rise up and um, create their own internet. What advice would you give to new entrepreneurs entering the blockchain space and uh, crypto today? So as a regulatory lawyer, um, ultimately, I would say make sure you know your regulatory position so that you are protected. Um, certainly in a world, in the last year, um, the, we, we were in a kind of US regulation by enforcement territory. I think we're now looking at moving away from that, which is great, but clearly that's dominated the crypto industry. So it's really important to know your business model and get it blessed and make sure that you're acting in compliance with the laws so that you can get the fundraising that you're seeking so that the counterparties you're dealing with, whether they're banks or exchanges, um, know that you know your position and that way you can be secure about your business prospects.